right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com. Definitely hit subscribe here on YouTube. As always, if you learned something, hit that like button, leave a comment, and make sure you ring the bell so you get that notification when I drop a new video. So today, I'm in SQL Server. We're, we're going to talk a little bit about T-SQL here. We're going to build a parameterized query in SQL Server using SP Execute SQL. So SP Execute SQL, it's a built-in stored procedure in SQL Server that enables the execution of dynamically constructed SQL statements. So uh, the advantages of using a dynamically constructed SQL statement is, you know, in, in some cases, using a hard-coded SQL statement is not ideal because processes can be dynamic and you need to build that SQL statement on the fly. Um, SP Execute SQL is going to give you a little bit more protection against SQL injection attacks with respect to uh, just using the execute command. Um, with the execute command, you build a dynamic SQL by concatenation, and that opens up the door for SQL injection. I'm not going to get too deep into that. But additionally, with SP Execute SQL, I can bake in the parameter to the text string being applied without the need to use the concatenation. So let me let me get into the code here. Um, and uh, you will see the advantage. So uh, what I want to do first, let's turn on our line numbers. If you don't know how to do that uh, in SQL Server here, I'm using the SQL Server uh, Express. We're going to go uh, to, uh, to Options, and then I'm going to look for Text Editor, and then Transact SQL, and then General, and you'll see I have line numbers. That's always handy to turn on. So go ahead and uh, turn on the uh, the line numbers here. So uh, in case there are any errors, it's just good practice. In case you have any errors, you know what uh, what line number that uh, they are talking about. Uh, first up, let me say that I'm using this wor Wide World Importers uh, DW uh, database or data set from, um, from Microsoft. It's their, um, their training uh, database for data warehouses. And so you can see I've got the, the link here, but you can also just kind of Google search for uh, wide world importers and you'll find uh, this data set. And I just imported it in, right? Um, so the first thing I want to do, I just want to run a simple select query here, like an inline uh, SQL query, um, joining from the sales table to a dimension table city. Uh, on the city key, and I just want to see all the sales from New York. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of free up my uh, cache, and then let's run our query. And you'll see I have sales from New York. And let me go ahead and change that to, uh, let's go with Cali. Big ups to Cali, right? So let's go ahead and run that again. So we've got California. Now let's take a look. This query is going to uh, show me what my cache looks like. And if you'll notice here, um, I have a number of queries that are coming back, but you'll see what I'm looking for is this query right here, New York and California. You'll see I have queries that were run. I have plans, I should say, for both of these queries. And so I want to use the same query plan uh, for, for the same query, essentially. Multiple plans mean a, additional CPU time, um, and that's bad. More memory used for caching plans, that's less memory used uh, for, for caching data. I want one plan, right? Uh, one plan is good. The plan is stored in memory. The next time the stored procedure is called, the execution plan is re uh, retrieved from memory without the need to uh, recalculate. So that's why I want to put this in a stored procedure. So put your queries in a stored procedure, and if you need to parameterize it, use SP execute SQL. So let's get into um, coding out the, uh, the parameterized uh, query that we're going to use here. Okay, let's get to typing here. I'm going to go down some lines here. And first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to declare um, a variable. Let's call that SQL text as a var car. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll overdo it here a thousand. That's fine. So it's going to be a, this is going to be a variable that's going to hold uh, our text. 
Now let's go ahead and declare another variable. Let's call this uh, param state input. And that's also going to be, let's do uh, in, in varcar 20, right? We're all about the Unicode. So we declared two variables. And so great, you declared variables, you have to set them to something, right? So let's go ahead and set um, our param state input. I'm just going to copy here. And let's use, um, I'm in Georgia, right? ATL represent, let's go ahead and use Georgia. So our parameter that we declared is set to Georgia, right? And then let's also, let's set the, uh, the SQL code. So we have to uh, set the, uh, the SQL text here. So I'm going to say set, and I'm just going to copy this. Set SQL text equal to, and now let's go up here, and I'm just going to copy all of this. Let's do that. All right, it's not going to like it at first. And the only thing I'm going to do here, I'll explain this in a second. Amper param state val. All right, so what have I done here? So I took the query, the inline query up here, and I'm, I'm assigning it to SQL text. And I put an n in front. I'm just uh, the prefix um, to say that these, this is a Unicode character string. Without that n prefix, the string is converted to uh, whatever the default code page of the database is. And so the code page determines what characters you can store in a database. And so if I don't tell it explicitly, um, then it may not recognize certain characters. Now, I don't have anything strange in here, but it's just good practice. So that's why I put the in here. So just saying we're Unicode. And then I've also have my, par I'm, I've created a parameter or I'm refer, I haven't created it yet, but I'm referring to a parameter that's going to hold uh, the value that I pass into it, right? So, so let's continue on. How do I call my statement here. Let's go ahead and call this statement. Okay, let's put these variables to work. So I'm going to use execute. We go with dbo.sp underscore execute SQL. And then I have to give it some variables here. So we want to give it our SQL text that we just defined. And now I need to define um, that parameter that I was talking about earlier, param. I referred to it, but it's not defined yet. Param state val. And that's going to be in varcar, you know, we'll say 20. That's fine. And we'll close that up, comma. And then we have to actually um, pass. We declared it. So now we have to give it a value, right? So param state val is equal to uh, what's it going to be? The parameter that we defined earlier, right, that I set to, um, to Georgia. So param state input, state input. And hopefully, hopefully this should work. All right, so let's go ahead, let's go ahead and run this guy right here. If I did everything correctly, we're going to run all of this. And what do we get? There we go. And you'll see, we get state province Georgia. These are all sales um, associated with Georgia. And you'll notice, again, it's calling, um, it's using this param state val. I don't have to concatenate this in. It's baked in if I were to just use a regular execute. And let's go ahead and change this. So instead of Georgia, uh, what's a, okay, how about this? Vermont, right? Do you know anyone from Vermont? If you're from Vermont, uh, leave a comment, shout out. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and rerun this. Right, I get Vermont. So here, here's another check. I want to clear, I'm gonna clear my cache and let's see how many plans um, we create. So let's clear the cache, right? Cache should be cleared. I'm gonna run it uh, one time here for Vermont and then we'll change it back to Georgia. So we'll do that, right? We got Vermont and then we're gonna go Georgia. 
<laughs> I can't believe I picked Vermont. Shout out to Vermont. Uh, we're going to run this again. And now let's take a look at the, at the cash. Let's take a look at the plans here, the uh, cash plans. And you'll see I don't have multiple plans for that, for that query. Right. This is the this is the plan. This is very meta. This is the plan that I just ran here. But even though I ran this twice, I only have one compiled plan here. And so that's what we want to see. So, again, um, I'm, I'm executing the plan. I'm pulling it from memory and, and running it without, you know, duplicating plans. So when you're running one or two queries here locally, it's not a big deal. But when you put something in production, it could be a big deal. You just want uh, uh, one plan, if possible. Put it in a stored procedure. So this has been Anthony Smoke. Hope you enjoyed this tip. Again, you need to learn some, uh, some T-SQL, some SQL. Don't just be the front-end guy. Um, be that guy people go to to analyze data in your database, no matter where it lies, right? If it's, if it's in the database... Um, if someone's already prepared it for you, you got to visualize it. Be that guy. Be that Swiss Army knife for data. So hopefully you enjoy this tip. Get out there. Do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.